all right so the next thing on the list to do was to do the fuel lines so I'm sticking with the, the rubber fuel lines that came with the kit so that's the two holes with the grommet uh, edge protector around that's where it goes into the fuselage and there it comes out it comes along this channel right in front of the main spark carry through behind this box through that kind of the triangular section there it's a bit of a tight bend but it's not bad um, comes into the center channel and here around about here it connects to the fuel selector valve so we install that with uh, uh, the rib nuts and um, everything is in place just need to slide the hoses rubber hoses in um, so it's two, two from both sides uh, the feed and return and then the two from the top of the fuel selector valve goes this is the return line coming back this is the line going forward uh, TPs to the check valve and then parallel to that would be the booster pump the pumps mounted in the location as per the latest boot manual but I've kind of arranged this uh, my cabin heat in this area so that the fuel line gets a clear path uh, going straight out through that through those heat uh, cabin heat ducting and they come out yeah, so there's another that, that TP connects back up, up there so that's kind of parallel path to the uh, booster pump and then they both the uh, feed and return goes to the firewall forward um, rubber grommet and a I think it's an a and six bulkhead on both um, on the other side one is a 90 degree one and the other is a straight one um, so I'll have to figure out which one's best uh, I think this is correct because uh, the fuel pump goes here the feed goes straight to the gas glider which I need to mount here um, there are no holes in the firewall so I think that has to be done and I think this hole is for the brake fluid brake reservoir that goes sits somewhere up here yeah that's pretty much it for the fuel line installation um, it wasn't that bad install installing them I haven't really crimped these connections yet uh, until uh, just until everything is finalized while trialing the internal skins so I'll put that one on this one um, it's I need to do a little bit of rework here uh, where this where the canopy the fiberglass bit sticks out a little bit so that this piece of skin can't stick you know go further behind and um, so I just need to take a little bit of material off that uh, canopy there and um, as you can see on the other side that's how it is it's, it goes uh, behind the, uh, the that internal skin goes further rearwards of the, the canopy uh, which is, is we can't do that here so once that little bit is gone then this should all be flush and um, yeah I can seal the use the seeker flex, flex to seal that uh, cabin heat uh, channel uh, which goes to the back and round about here I need to bring that um, the upholstery panel and cut out the hole for the the rear vents um, also only once this is all installed I can fit the uh, the latch mechanism um, the catch plates kind of thing um, yeah and then pretty much the doors are also done um, which we have still have to stuck stick the glass uh, or the perspex on but that's will only be done after paint anyway so so another thing that I did do is that uh, from Evan's latest video uh, he mentioned these uh, cabin heat valves um, reason be the issue being that they don't completely seal obviously you'll have a gap uh, if it's just a metal so what I've done is I've used a little bit of uh, the craft form and stuck that onto it um, just cut it out just a little bigger than the diameter of that oval and pretty much it gets a really nice seal as you can see there's no light coming through when it is fully sealed it's great and also the other side where the where they had done the the 
the attack welded that plate uh, I use seeker flex to seal that as well so pretty much the part is now fully sealed from both sides it should stop you know cold air coming in when you just switched it into the cabin heat mode so and hopefully this will stop it from rattling as well during idle because now it shouldn't be rattling because previously it was there's, any, there's no play in it now uh, because of that foam layer yeah so such so it's probably a simple solution I saw this in one of the comments uh, on Evans video and I think this should work okay so I've taken a little bit of that of the canopy of that bottom edge the rear corner of it so now the, the that internal skin can slide all the way back and it's a nice flush fit as you can see uh, perfectly aligns with the front uh, inside skin uh, same on this side is quite good as well and um, just uh, do a tiny bit of flanging on that section where the seat belt passes through on the skin yeah so it's time to seek a flex and seal that internal channel that's the next step so I've brought in the the upholstery's upholstered skin that goes on the inside and just mark to mark the holes for the uh, the rear cabin heat vent so that's the location over there the upholstery itself is and it's really nice uh, it's a perfect fit so mark the location there So now I can cut that chan uh, cut that hole and also seed and everything. Um, I think I'll have to. The top of this is attached via uh, M4 screws, so you need rib nuts behind. I think uh, it doesn't say anywhere in the manual, but that's what I've seen. Uh, what other builders have done. It would have been nice if there was some sort of uh, a clip so that it just pushes on, so that none of the things would have been visible probably look into that before I do any rib nuts so to cut the hole for the uh, the cabin vent uh, use a Dremel kind of tool to initially cut it off and then used a kind of like a drum sander attachment uh, to the drill to get to a, a nice hole uh, clean off any burrs and then obviously this is a I made it slightly bigger so that it takes up any positional tolerance uh, but yeah it should align perfectly with the uh, with the one the hole in the upholstery and uh, this should go on fit nicely nice and tight so I've brought the inside skin back after cutting the hole for the cabin vent nicely placed and also having flanged the section where the a seat belt comes out. Uh, in, in terms of the next step is to seek a flex and um, rivet the zone. I don't think I can do that until um, the canopy is painted because because um, mine's not a quick build. The canopy itself is not painted, um, and it, it will it won't look nice um, with that inside skin if that's already on and are painted on top. So it has to it'll have to wait. Uh, until the the whole fuselage is moved to the paint boot and that's all done uh, as far as further work uh, i'm still waiting on the avionics harness uh, to arrive um, there was some delay because um, we've had to add a few con components uh, essentially to meet the uk caa requirements in terms of getting the uh, air aircraft ready for ifr flight um, so uh, a certified altitude encoder had to be added uh, that caused a little bit of delay and then a few changes to the to the buttons that I had put on the control stick um, but that's all done uh, hopefully um, they will be able to ship that uh, this week and then hopefully by next week I should have it here uh, to lay it all in and then be able to move the build to the paint booth yeah so that's it for this time um, take care everyone, bye